Hey everybody. Ooh, look at that. Hold on. Hey, there you go. That's better. Everybody out there can hear me. It's your old buddy Doug Munro here for True Fire. I'm gonna be doing a little uh playing tonight. We're gonna be doing uh, some Brazilian stuff. I I was a bit ambitious in the beginning and I realized that uh there's only so much I could do. Um, so yeah, so what, what I'm going to do is we're going to take a look at the Partido Alto, which is a uh, Brazilian rhythm. Uh, it's a type of samba and the, uh, the Partido Alto is kind of cool. It's uh, like a two bar figure and you can play it forward or you could play it sort of backwards. There's like a reverse Partido Alto and, uh, yeah. So like, uh, let's just get started. And, uh, if you guys have um, questions, you don't got to wait till the end. Any questions that you have, just fire them out. I'll try and deal with them real time as much as I can. But, oh, also, there's going to be three songs uh, that we're going to do. Two are going to be really sort of standardy, standard uh, samba, Brazilian type tunes. We're going to do um, Girl from Ipanema. We're going to do a one note samba. And those are both by Antonio Carlos Jobim. And you can just, you can find them on the internet anywhere. But the third song that we're going to do is an actual song called Partido Alto. <laughs> and it's uh, written by this guy, Jose Bertrami. And um, I, I posted a chart. So you can go to the True Fire, I guess, to my site. And um, you can download it. So you're going to need to do that because you're going to need it for this little lesson. So we'll do that last, but go and download it now. So it says here, Jeff, I see you said, you can download the material here. So he just posted a link where you can go and download it. Thanks, Jeff. Groovy. All right. So now back to business. Uh, we're going to start with the sort of the, what I call the, I don't know, I'll call it the forward partido alto. All right. So here it is in two, four time. And basically what it is, is it would be one, two, 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 bop, 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 That's the forward partido alto. Probably the best way to demonstrate it is to play it. You've heard it a thousand times. One of the big fans of this partido alto is uh, a Wal Gilberto, also Antonio Carlos Jobim too, but uh, if you check them out, even when they're doing the slow bossa nova stuff, they're often playing this partido alto rhythm, which is just a great rhythm. And also uh, the tradition of this rhythm is that it lends itself to improvisation. And also it was sort of like a fun thing where uh, people would argue good naturedly back and forth over this partido alto. So it really sort of lends itself to the sort of Brazilian jazz thing because improv is a big part of jazz. All right. So, um, oh, so check this out. So the guitar I'm using tonight, you've never seen one of these before. Uh, this is a Godin Multiac nylon string rosewood. I literally just got it delivered yesterday. Thank you, Fred uh, DeSantos at um, Godin Guitars. Uh, he uh, shipped this here so I could demo it tonight, but this is a, uh, a limited run guitar uh, for them, and uh, it's pretty awesome. <laughs> and this is going to be the axe that I'm going to use tonight. So let's let's start right in with um, the girl from Ipanema. So hopefully most of you know that. If you don't know that, open up your iReal book and check it out. I'm only going to play the first part. I'm going to play the uh, F chord, the G7 chord, the G minor, the G flat seven to the F. And then the turnaround, we're just going to go up a half step. Okay. So what I'm going to start with, I got my little loop pedal here. And um, I don't know if any of you know, but like I'm sort of kind of big into the loop thing. I have a, a DVD called Loop Mania. And I also did a, uh, a solo guitar pedal called Alone But Not Alone. Anyway, it's my good friend because like I live upstate. I'm by myself. I'm lonely. I have a loop pedal. That's what I play with. All right, here we go. So I'm going to set up a little bass, bass line here for this. Okay. 
Cool. So now I got that bass line. And that's a typical bass line for uh, samba and bossa nova, where a lot of Afro-Cuban stuff really accentuates beat four, like almost beat four is their beat one. Here, in this style of music, where uh, it's this is pretty much a lot of what the bass line is. Boom, ding, 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 ding. All right, so now I'm just going to play the chords, and I'm going to do that partito alto rhythm. on the dominant seventh chord i don't know why but that's what i did all right so uh yeah man uh there there it is i mean i kind of i kind of went with it and uh you know did a little extra stuff oh check this out dylan johnson from my graduating class at purchase college hey brother thanks for uh tuning in here yeah man uh oh yeah people in japan yeah Good, into samba, partido alto, triste, yeah, groovy. All right, so uh, yeah, so uh, so what I did there was obviously you just don't do the same thing all night long. You know, you you got to mix it up, and uh, you mix it up. I feel according to like what's happening. You know, who are you playing with? Um, you'll also notice. Oh, we got Australia online here. Hey, Matthew, excellent. Cool. All right. Um, yeah. So, so uh, you know, so I mix it up. Also, uh, another big thing here is you'll notice I am not a fan of the giant chord. I a lot of times am playing three and four note chords like F's. You know. Um, so I, I I tend to play like little little chords. And uh, the, the reason for that is um, I think that I get better voice leading. You'll notice that, that everything that I play, even though I'm doing this partito alto rhythm, I'm thinking about where I'm moving. So when I, uh, when I move in between chords, I try and connect my chords by step. Chord, that's when I could leap around. So if I'm on an F chord, then I got to move my step to the G chord. step to the G minor, move by step to the G flat seven, then move by step to the F. So that's just in general, just a cool thing, you know, for, uh, for doing that. So um, now let me throw the melody in because uh, believe it or not, these songs actually have melodies. So uh, you, you should learn them. You should know the melody to the song. You should learn the lyrics to the song. Um, probably most of you know what this song is about. It's about some like tall chick walking on a beach, snubbing everybody. The girl from Ipanema. And as she passes, each one she passes goes, oh my. Uh, so now I'm gonna do the same thing again. And, uh, uh, oh, here, somebody just wrote, I don't understand what you mean by step. Okay, so uh, in music, uh, well, Western music, the smallest interval we can move is a half step. Or think of Jaws. And uh, this is from uh, Jarek Anderson. Yeah, so, uh, so when I say connecting by step, I mean connecting by either a whole or a half step. Because sometimes what you get, like here, here would be like kind of like 
not such a pleasant sound. Check this out. I'm gonna I'm gonna play the same chords. I'm gonna play Partillo Alto, but I'm not gonna connect my chords nice. Okay, so you see that? I'm jumping at the wrong times. There's times to jump and there's times to not jump. So the general rule is step across, meaning across a bar line, or across when a chord changes. Leap within, step across. So when you're on a chord, now move by step. Leap around on that chord, but then move by step to the G minor. Move by half step to the next one. Half step to the next one. Up, right? So I don't I don't know if that helps. Uh, good. Jarek said, I totally hear it. Good, good. Uh, let's see, Ross from, from Australia wants to know what kind of looper am I using? Well, I'm using the little baby boss one. Uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it's the little one that just has the two pedals. They have one now that's just one pedal. Then they got the giant one. That's basically three loopers in one. That was my baby. I had that for many years. And then I wound up giving it to my older son and he gave me this older, older version back so that's what i'm using <coughs> you can't really do you know you can't really do too much with this but um but you know for our purposes it's it's groovy you know it's it's good all right oh wow somebody just wrote me from crimea ciao baby what's happening i like this the whole world is watching and and we're not doing anything fake this is all real shit right here good so um let me, let me throw the melody in there, okay? Because that, that's another thing that you really need to deal with. Can you play Partito Alto and have the melody in there? Yes, you can. the bridge is very easy to um to put the partito alto on you know then it goes to g minor now watch i connect nicely to my d right then you can always throw a little stairway to heaven and the e flat a connecting to the D, D minor by step to the C, and then the uh, tritone sub. So, uh, yeah. So, what's a tritone sub? I don't know. It's a no. I do know. It's a um, it's a chord, a flatted fifth away from the chord that should be played. So, if you're playing G minor, C seven. F, play G minor, G flat seven, flat five maybe, to F. And that's another common move. This thing I'm doing here. That's, um, who's the guy that did Rhapsody in Blue? Was it Irving Berlin? Well, anyway, uh, that... That's sort of uh, what that really is, is that's the sharp nine and flat nine on a five chord. 
you know? So what I'm doing here is I'm doing the F chord and then I'm just doing. So I'm just moving it parallel. There we go, Gershwin. Thank you so much. Thank you. See that? We got scholars out there. Excellent. Um, cool. So that's, you know, that's, that's that. Uh, how about if I move on? All right. I'm going to go um, to our second song. All right. Let me see. Does anybody have any questions before I leave this song? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, somebody wrote uh, about, you know, Portuguese. Um, what a great, beautiful language uh, for singing. You know, a lot of bossa novas are sung in uh, Portuguese. And it it's, uh, you know, it, it's tremendous. I can't do it, but it's very groovy. Um, okay, this is great. Uh, somebody wrote, is this really live now? Or just was it just shot live? No, this is really live. This is the sound of bossa nova. Yes, bossa nova, samba. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, again, you know, I let the experts sort of fight this out. I, I did a, uh, well, I do have a course on here, Eight Essential Latin Jazz Styles. And I also wrote a book for Alfred Music on it. And the one thing that I learned is that nobody agrees on anything. Even the experts are, you know, this is this and that's that. So, um, I'm, I'm just more into just sort of sharing what I know and showing you what I hear. And, uh, and then you guys can sort out sort of what's proper or not proper. I, I don't really think that that's super important. Um, Ileana Elias, a great piano player. She was married to Randy Brecker for many years. I did a clinic with her and she said, she said, look, forget it. If you want to get super technical, about all these Brazilian styles. She goes, it literally changes almost town to town. So she's like, forget it, just have fun. You know, like just learn these rhythms, play them, try and use them. And, and again, you know, let everybody else, you know, sort it out, okay? Uh, let's see, uh, Ross wrote me, are you playing straight into an amp, an app? Um, or tell us about, uh, I did say about the guitar that this is a uh, a Godin brand new model rosewood. Um, this is a nylon duet. I think A S A E A something. Um, awesome guitar. Uh, they were nice enough to ship me one just for this broadcast to demo it, and uh, it it's it's really it's a beauty and uh, it it sounds good. I am playing through an amplifier. Uh, I find that I just get a better sound. You know, I like, I like going through an amp. I know that there's lots of groovy amp sims and stuff, but to me, the thing that bugs me is it always seems to have like some kind of like plunky, plunky thing, you know, with the digital stuff. So I try to avoid it as much as I can. Sometimes you can't. Um, yeah. So there's somebody on here that's from Brazil that's checking this out. So I better not screw up anymore. Although I've probably already screwed up enough. So, so let me just apologize uh, for all the wrong stuff that I'm laying on you. Um, let's move on to one note samba. And, and I'm, I'm fairly certain that this is probably a, uh, a samba. I mean, that's just my guess for the title, but hopefully we can all agree that this is a samba. And um, uh, there's a bunch of stuff for this. This is going to be a little brighter than what we did before. I don't want to go too crazy fast, um, but I'm going to I'm going to do it uh, uh, a little faster. OK, um, so let me try and lay down a bass line and not screw up the loop. Um. So this is, there's that, the partita also. 
So, um, I did something in the bridge there. I actually wound up playing the bridge just, just to, just to like, it's a foreshadowing of things to come because what's going to come is we're going to do the reverse clave. All right. So we're going to do the reverse clave. If the flow forward clave is, but the, the reverse clave is one, two, 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 one. Okay. The reverse clave. So I did that on the bridge. So let me do it again. I'm going to do forward clave <coughs> for the uh, for the little A section. And then I'm going to do reverse clave for the bridge. Okay. Uh, man, I'm getting a lot of stuff here. Let's see. Hmm. That's great. Somebody said, this stuff is so funky, man. Thank you. Uh, Steve Martin would rather be Bill Murray, but we'll take what I could get. <laughs> I don't even know what that means, but cool. Uh, all right. Uh, okay. Very nice. All right. So um, here we go. I'm going to play the regular forward partido alto. Then on the bridge, I'm going to play the backward one. Or try it. Oh, let me start that again. You know, I do this thing, and I'm trying not to do it now. When I play this, I play it different than most people. Right? I come back up, and it's just sort of a I don't know. It's a thing that I do, and I'm trying not to do it now because I just want to show you the proper way. So here we go one more time. So there I did um, kind of like went with it, did some uh, modifications on it. And um, I encourage you to do that, you know? Uh, yeah, so um, what am I doing when I'm doing that? It's all based on the Partido Alto, all right? So everything I'm thinking, um, you know, uh, pretty much everything I'm thinking is, is a but but within that i'm letting myself be free the partido alto lends itself to improvisation so that's you know that's what i'm doing i'm i'm trying to be um 
you know, to, to improvise with it. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this. Uh, this is not something I really planned on doing, but let me see if I could get my uh, metronome going here. And then I could just do some vamping. Um, uh, bah, bah, uh, 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 uh. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so I have the metronome at 100. That happens to be my IQ. <sighs> Don't laugh. Okay, so let me just know if you can hear this. So there you go. That was sort of a, uh, I don't know what you want to call that, but uh, I was just sort of just jamming on those chord changes. And uh, yeah, you know, I, uh, I, I, I did, you know, I, uh, I did a lot of partido alto stuff. And did you dig that? Like I can like play with the metronome, you know? <clears throat> Again, I'm sort of like this lonely guy, you know, I, I live in upstate New York. There's not a lot of cats around. And so uh, this is another one of my good friends, the metronome. And this little guy is totally unyielding. You know, I speed up, I slow down. That little metronome does not speed up or slow down. Really keeps me honest. And uh, wow, a lot of people are saying nice stuff. Thank you so much. That's really cool. So it's really great. One of the guys on here is like Steve Martin. And I'm like looking at the picture. It doesn't look like the Steve Martin. I don't see the arrow through the head, but that's groovy. But a lot of people are saying some nice stuff. Thank you. And, uh, you know, and you can do all this stuff too. I mean, believe me, I, I one thing I always tell my students is, is that if I can do it, you can do it. You know, really, it's it's not rocket science. I mean, it's just really uh a lot of practice i mean you know you just gotta you know um come up with a good practice routine sort of like a concept you know i i think one of the worst things that that students can do is uh to get locked into like scales modes arpeggios uh because um 
that's not the way we make music. I mean, just think, uh, say you're going to write a book, all right? So you were going to write a book about Shakespeare, and I was going to write a book about the life of Shakespeare, okay? So you went and you took the 26 letters of the alphabet. You had them all there, you know, nice little A, B, C, Ds, right? And you had them in your little bag, and you went off to write your book, and you had the 26 letters of the alphabet. Me, on the other hand, I read Shakespeare's stuff. Um, I could recite Shakespeare. I could read his words. And I also read books about him. So when I went to write, I could actually form words about Shakespeare, where you would have this bag of letters. So my book would be, you know, a two Brutus, and your book would be ABC, FGI. And uh, I know that's sort of a silly way of looking at it, but music is not scales. You know, uh, music, you know, when we describe music, we say, yes, Western music is based off the notes of a C major scale, or, you know, I mean, the notes of a scale. I mean, and if you want to go back further, the Greek modes literally were like the Ionian mode literally was the notes from C to C. So uh, so my point is that all this stuff that I'm doing, I am thinking much more about lines, melody lines, harmonies, connecting. Now, did I start with scales? Yes, I did. I learned all my scales. I learned all my modes. I learned my arpeggios. I learned all my chords. But that's not the end all. It's it's that's like the beginning, you know, um, so many times um, I teach at Purchase College and you'll get, you know, some of the students will come in and I'll be like, oh, that was nice. You know, that was cool. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm playing like, you know, the fourth mode of the upside down Lydian scale on that. And I'm like, well, what the hell is that? You know, so for me, I I mean, at, at one time I could do all those. But um, now um, uh, what I do is I feel like I'm freer. So say, for example, if I'm playing F, right, uh, or B flat, you know, this song, um, One Note Samba is in B flat. So I'm doing B flat. <coughs> um, I, I, I don't feel like I'm limited to, right? I could be, uh, you know, so I, I think more like I can see the harmony and I know what it is I'm playing. Here I'm playing the root, the major seven, and the flat seven. And then I'm putting a triad, a whole step above B flat. Okay? So that's a very common sort of like bebop thing that people play. But that's not like one scale. You know, can you dig it? It's not, it's not one scale. So for a lot of this stuff that I'm doing and that I'm showing you, I think that that what you have to shoot for is getting beyond scales, modes, arpeggios. Those are sort of like the building blocks for building music. But music is uh, the result of combining these things into uh, things that your mind perceives as a unity. You know, that's the uh, definition of a melody, is a, a series of notes that the mind perceives as a unity. So, for example, if... Uh, I don't know, over an E, I did uh, okay, so uh, I did the partito alto, but I did it in a sequence, right? Okay, so um, so that, that sequence to your ear, it kind of like made sense. You don't really have to know what it was I was doing, but it all sort of sounded E minor-ish. You know? So, uh, so th those are things that you should, uh, you know, you should shoot for is that kind of stuff. Um, a great way to get that stuff, uh, especially for old timers like me, is uh, we transcribed. Uh, you know, pick something that you like. 
<coughs> I can remember uh, Pat Martino. I was like, oh my gosh, I heard the uh, impressions thing that he did. You know, and I was like, oh, I, I gotta know, I gotta find out like, what is that? So I transcribed it and I figured it out. What is he doing? Uh, Django Reinhardt, you know, what is he doing? Minor four chord. You know, so I, I, uh, I learned a lot of stuff through transcribing, you know, and so you should do that too. So I also did that with the Brazilian stuff. Um, you know, there's so many greats. I mean, you know, like what we're doing right now is so awesome. You can go online and you literally can, can just find anything, you know? Um, so yeah, you know, um, somebody said here, a suggestion for a practice routine. Okay. That that's really good because, um, perhaps you're independently wealthy and you don't need to ever work and you could just sit and practice all day. That's, I mean, I'm like, yes, that was always my dream. Didn't work out, but that was my dream. So if you're living that dream, good. But, you know, uh, for most of us, practice time is, uh, you know, we, we have to make sure that, that we're getting a, a lot of bang for our buck. So, um, so my practice routine uh, follows a few simple rules. <coughs> the, the first thing is start with what you're worst at. OK, whether it's reading or repertoire, you know, like say like, you know, like, you know, say we got together and I said, OK, you know, like you took you, you learned the Brazilian thing. Let's play a song. Let's play a bossa nova or a samba. Oh, dude, I don't know one. Well, learn one. OK, learn girl from Ipanema. Learn one note samba. Learn partido alto, you know. And um so I would say start with what you're worst at. Only you know what you really suck at. And whatever you're really bad at, that's what you need to start with first. For me, my lifelong battle has been with technique. I think that, like, I was not blessed with the greatest dexterity. So I constantly, constantly work on technique all the time. I start by working on technique, and then I go on to other stuff. And then a lot of times at the end of the day, if I'm watching a ball game on TV, Got the guitar, working on technique, you know, without my amp on. So, you know, for me, technique. Uh, so start with what you're worst at. Another thing, too, that you don't want to do, I don't know how many people, how many of you out there have ever had uh, a tendonitis or any kind of repetitive stress injury from playing. Uh, I, I got this advice from a uh, um, flamenco guitar player, Mariano Mengus, from Burgos, Spain. Although I think now he lives in Madrid. He said um, uh, he never practices anything for more than 15 minutes. So say you're trying to figure out, uh, I don't know. I, I've been working on uh, Django's Tiger, all right? So say there's, there's a part of the song. All right, so say I'm working on that. After about 15 minutes, I move on to something else. Because if you're doing that over and over and over again, you could like, you know, wreck yourself. You know, you could uh, get some repetitive stress syndrome. Another thing everybody should do is get an app, practice with a metronome. Oh my gosh, there's gonna be cats that are gonna tell you not to practice with a metronome. You have to have your own sense of time, blah, blah, blah. It'll help you develop a good sense of time. It'll teach you how to play with other people. You know, this is another person. It's a little robot that's unyielding. But practice with your metronome. Definitely practice with your metronome. Another thing that I try and do, and again, there's going to be people out there, they're going to be like, my teacher told me, do this. I say, try not to tap your foot when you play. When you tap your foot, you're trying to impose your time on what's happening as opposed to being a part of what's happening, you know? So, um, you know, so that, that's my little spiel there. So, oh, and did I say about reading? For crying out loud, learn how to read. Don't be that guy, you know? How do you make a guitar player turn down? Put music in front of them, right? Yes, it's hard to read on guitar. What other instrument has five middle Cs? Here's one, one, two, uh, three, sorry, four, five. So this instrument has five middle Cs. 
Piano has one middle C. This instrument is not easy to read on. So work on it, you know, work, work, work. You'll get it, you know, start easy, start a little bit and just do it. Consistency, that's another thing. Man, just think those of you that are uh, in school or college or high school or whatever, just think how much more you get out of doing a little bit every day. Say you do an hour a day as opposed to cramming eight hours the day before. Huge difference. Things got to bubble around. You got to practice it. You got to think about it. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> Somebody just said, ah, I can't read for shit. Well, you know, none of us can. I mean, believe me, you know, in my entire life, I've met one cat, one guitar player that literally he could read like you're reading a book. Only one guy. And I've been around a long time. So reading on guitar is not easy, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't try and do it. It'll get you a lot more work, a lot more gigs, and it helps your technique. It's it's satisfying. It's just very satisfying. All right. Now, I'm going to move on because, like, I, I want to do this Partido Alto lead sheet. Did everybody download this thing? So this is, like, a really sort of groovy tune. And um, uh, there's a group called Trio de Paz. Uh, check them out. The guitar player is Romero Lombambo. And... Uh, Man, they are just killing. I mean, there's also Ayerto has a version of this with Flora Purim, who sings the other two songs that we did. So you could check that out. And now let's see if I could set up this loop because this is going to be the reverse partito alto and the bass actually plays the loop. I mean, you know, plays the reverse partito alto. So I got to start my loop, but not play on beat one. So here we go. Good luck. see what the crossover is yeah, not bad i think i can live with that so that's the partito alto one and two three okay notice i'm not playing partito So now I'm going to play a, um, a G minor chord, but with a major seven. It's a very nice sounding chord. Check this out. Kind of groovy, huh? All right. So uh, so that's sort of like a different use of the partito alto where the bass player and the drummer are playing the reverse partito alto and the melody is playing this da 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 you know, which is kind of cool. It's it's uh it's a contrast to the partito alto, where the partito alto is uh, very syncopated and the melody is not. And then it has that middle part where it goes uh, da, 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 bo, bum, uh, ba, bum, uh, oh, uh, uh, right? And uh, <clears throat> for me, I, I kind of like that major, uh, the major seven on a minor chord. And I think it has a lot to do with a lot of the gypsy stuff I do. I don't know. It's just sort of groovy. I mean, the major seven on a minor chord is really a uh is it an is it an augmented triad yeah so it's really like 
It's like an augmented triad on a minor chord. Uh, and um, <clears throat> so for me, I kind of dig it. And uh, um, so let me let me do this. Uh, oh, I should be like answering some questions, shouldn't I? Let's see. Uh, here, Ierto and Flora, yeah. But also, Baden Pal, yeah. Yeah, there's so much good stuff. Uh, oh, someone said, thank you for doing this. Oh, that's so nice. Thank you, Andrew, Kent. Thank you. Uh, I'm totally awesome. I rock. Hey, come on. Of course I do. Uh, musicians looking in the musical mirror at each other. <laughs> That's great. Somebody wrote, it's like two musicians looking in the musical mirror at each other. I love that. All right. So, yeah. So, um, so let me go back to this, this thing here, because this reverse Partido Alto, um, you know, it's really cool. And, and this song is like awesome because it's sort of like G minor, you know, and let's face it, guitar guys, we love our minor pentatonic or minor stuff, you know? Uh, so let, let's see what kind of nonsense I could do over this thing. Here we go. Um, I'll start with the melody. Uh, uh, is that how I would do it? I guess. You know what? I'll just start this. Makes life easier. Here we go. Oh, you know what? That's another thing I wanted to show you. A lot of times I do subtle little different things. And if I was all hung up on scales, modes, and arpeggios, I would never do this stuff. So check it out. I'll go. So here on the G minor chord, I have no minor third. I have the sixth, the nine, and the five, and, the, and you know, the, the root, although I'm not playing it. And the reason being, I'm doing all the same fingerings. Right? So I'm not spelling G minor. But then other times I come and I go, and I do that, spelling the G minor seven. So, um, uh, you know, so again, this thing about being more, more into the sound and the vibe. Oh, and also, I mean, the whole point of what we're doing here is the rhythm. Oh my gosh, yes. So many cats are so hung up on harmony and their rhythms are horrible. And that's a crime against humanity. Come on, you know, like this music that we play uh, is, you know, is like half rhythm and, and half harmony, you know, like each informs the other. Without these rhythms, this, you know, ugh, don't do that, don't be that guy, you know? Don't, don't be that guy, be the guy that has the rhythm thing happening. You know, because if if you have the rhythmic thing happening, you can do a lot with very little. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm going to try and do just like just like a tiny little thing here. I'm going to try not to play a lot of different stuff, but I'm going to try and make it interesting, uh, rhythmically interesting. OK, over this um, reverse partito alto. Right. One. Uh, 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 one. Two. Uh, uh. major or minor. So my loops were not perfect. And uh, since my loop was not perfect, it sort of you know, it, it made me tumble across some of the bar lines. But you know who is perfect? My little friend here. Uh, 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 uh. 
I'm gonna slow them down a little bit. So here, so now I'm gonna do the same thing again, but now this is gonna be, now I can really go to town. So there you go. You know, um, I, I have to say that, you know, uh, a lot of the gigs that I do, um, a lot of what I do for me is is rhythmic, you know, and um, there's lots of good guys out there that are just rhythmically killing. Um, one guy that comes to mind is in New York. There's this cat, Peter Bernstein. I'm sure you guys probably heard of him. He's like a famous New York jazz guy, probably world famous. Uh, but his rhythm stuff. Oh, my gosh. His rhythms are so good. His time is so good. Mike Stern, fusion guy, you know, people, you know, know Mike for that certain thing that he does. Let me tell you, he has, you know, he has just the most incredible sense of time. Because a good friend of mine, Richie Morales, drummer, plays with Mike a lot. So I go down and try and like, you know, cop a hang and look cool when they're in town. And, um, and, and you know, and their sense of time is just, ugh. That's what I live for, you know, is that feeling, that groove. All right, so now we're going to be wrapping this up soon. So let's see. Um, any questions? Does anybody want, you know, anything that I did that's not clear uh, that you'd like me to do? Um, can you do that cross rhythm part? in your demo again hmm okay um not really sure what that means but you know what it might have been this is the thing i got this thing i got from pat Matheny. all right of all people pat the patster you know and uh and by the way in case you never checked it out his sense of time is just you know just as my mother would say forget about it so here, uh, I think this, I think this might be this cross rhythm that you're talking about. Minor, I'll go to G now. Was that it? I don't know. I hope so. Um, what I was doing there was I'm just filling in the blanks. So every time I'm not playing, I'm doing a bass note. So I'm always, always trying to play some kind of groovy fingering. They may not be groovy, but I'm trying to, you know, like at least that's my mindset. So here, this is a G minor nine, right? So, you know, like I, you know, like for me, like to play like, you know, like, I mean, not that I would never play that, but it's, I, I probably would have other stuff that I would play. 
you notice I'm a big fan of moving up a half step and going down, right? Anytime that you move up a half step, you're really, they call it side slipping, side streaming, splitting your pants. I don't know. Um, but what you're doing is you're just really doing this sort of tritone sub where, um, right? So it's kind of like the five, like, so I'm doing G minor. So the, the um, A flat is a tritone above the D7. So for me, anytime you do that, that's that's how you're, you know, like that's what that side slipping is. It's just sounding the five chord. Um, how long have I been playing? Um, well, you know, the funny thing is, is that I actually didn't start out on guitar. I started out on drums. I was like Joe Drummer. I started taking lessons in second grade, started playing professionally when I was 14. And then um, I had a big love affair with a girl. I chased her all over going, following her to college. I was never had plans of really going to college, but I chased her around. And uh, I was into sports. I was doing gymnastics and I broke my back doing gymnastics. I was laid up. I had to get surgery. It took a year after the surgery to recover. And for that year, I laid on my back, flat on my back, and I played guitar. So when I came out, I was a guitar player after that. And... I've been playing guitar about f almost 40 years now. So <laughs> that's a lot of practicing, you know, that's a lot of practicing. Uh, let's see, is a cutaway guitar more functional for playing bossa nova? Um, well, it depends on how high up the neck you want to play. I mean, you know, I mean, I didn't play up here at all. Well, maybe I did a little bit. Uh, but, you know, uh, with a solid body guitar, the cutaway doesn't matter. You know, it's not going to really affect stuff. With a true acoustic guitar, like a nice Spanish style guitar, I would have to opt for not the cutaway, only because to me it really compromises the sound. That's just, again, my own personal opinion. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, and, and it also depends on what you hear. Like if you hear everything up high, well, then get, get a guitar with a cutaway, you know? Um, let's see. Somebody wrote more functional for playing anything high up on the fretboard. Yes. Uh, boss guitar is basically oh, the tambourine part of the samba rhythm. There you go. Yeah. So uh, so that that was the thing about partito alto or one of the things, you know, and you can Wikipedia this stuff where they were saying that as the um, as as the percussion groups got smaller, that was also one of the starts of partito alto was that there wasn't as many uh, percussion guys. Um, do you ever gig using the looper? Yes, I do all the time. Um, every week I do a duo gig and it's not my gig. And uh, so I just show up and if there's a bass player, cool. But if there's a saxophone player, I use my looper because when it's my turn to solo, like I've been backing up this cat, you know, like, you know, and I've been doing all that. And then all of a sudden it's my turn to solo and it's like cricket, cricket, you know? So I, I loop when he's soloing, I loop what I'm playing for him and then I can just go and do it. So yes. Yeah. I use the looper live. Um, yeah. Uh, what do you practice to maintain your current level of chops? Yeah. I, uh, I would say that, um, for me, I'm so actively, thank God, I'm so actively engaged in the business that, uh, I'm always practicing and, and working. So I would say that my chops are pretty good because every day I'm struggling and panicking and trying to uh, get ready for the next gig. So I'm, I'm uh, constantly playing, uh, constantly, and, and also I constantly challenge myself, you know, as long as I've been playing, like I said, right now I'm working on a transcription of Django's Tiger. Not the easiest thing to play. I've been working on it for like two months. Um, I, so that, so that keeps my chops up. Reading keeps my chops up, you know, read the Bach two part inventions, uh, read, um, you know, uh, you know, violin books or clarinet books. Um, yeah, practice, practice. Somebody wrote, yeah, practice. Uh, have you played any hard boss up by Joyce? I have to say, I'm not sure. I mean, maybe if you said some of the n titles, maybe I would, but that doesn't, it doesn't ring a bell. Um, 
Let's see. All right. Well, I think I think that's pretty much it. It's 901, you know, and I'm going to turn into a pumpkin if I don't stop here. So uh, I just want to say thank you to everyone that watched this. I mean, that that was uh, really awesome. I had a great time. I hope that you had a great time. And uh, I want to thank uh, Jeff and Brad and Zach and everybody at, at True Fire for giving me the opportunity to do this. I hope everything sounded good. I hope we didn't like digitally fizz out or anything. And uh, until next time, cats, you know, be cool. All right, ciao.